Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Modern Arts here, and I'm gonna be making a tutorial on how to make an image like this right here. So, if you want to learn how to make that, uh, just watch this tutorial. So, first, what this consists of, you can see a simple, and I'm making this in Cinema 4D, which I forgot to mention. But what you can see, you have a simple floor, which is really easy to make. You have five spheres with different materials. You have this depth of field, which is made in Cinema 4D. And on the spheres, you can see some really cool HDR I image that's reflecting off of it. And there's a mini tutorial in that of how to get that. So what you're going to do is um, this link right here I'll have in the description. But it's a file front link on how to get... Um, get the HDRI and I have to give credit to iDigital Universe's video and that's where this link came from so I hope I'm not infringing any of my rights but whatever so yeah here's the link it will be in the description and you can tell it's a .rar file so unless you already know how to compress that and use it or whatever you want to do with it um, what you're gonna need to make it to be able to use a .rar file is unrarx and I guess you could just search on RX, but for people who are too lazy, I'll give a link for that site in the description. And I don't want to take too long giving a tutorial on how to use it, but it's pretty simple. Just look up a tutorial on how to use UnRarX. Pretty much you just open your file that's .rar in Finder and then right click on it and do open with UnRarX and that's pretty much the way you do it. But this is a really easy download, so I'm going to give those two links in the description minimize that so let's get to the project I'm not going to start the project from scratch I'm just going to already have it open and I hope that isn't an inconvenience but I'm just going to say what I did because I want to keep this under 15 minutes which is the YouTube limit so first you have a floor so just add in a floor the way you do that you click these four hours and click floor once you have that, the material you're using is, I think it's this one. Is this it? I'm going to need to find it. I know it's a slate. This is it. So what you can see, it's a slate material. And the way you're going to make this, you're going to go to File, Load Material. Actually, before we do this, I'm just going to give you guys the settings, what you want for a render. So go over here to your settings thing, type in Output 1280 by 720 and you're only gonna render the current frame because we're only rendering an image if you want to make this an animation go right ahead but I'm just giving a tutorial on the image for save shave it as a JPEG and save it wherever you want to uh, then check off ambient occlusion which is under effects just find it and click it and you're gonna go to contrast you're gonna want that to be 35 percent around 35 percent then you're gonna go to effect and click on where is it well, uh, it's not there, but for me, but global illumination. And the only thing you're going to change, you're going to go to iridense, whatever that is. And the first two boxes, change them to low, which makes it a quicker render, but something, I guess, not as detailed or whatever. doesn't make a difference for me, and it probably won't make a difference for you. And then finally, you're going to click effect, and you're going to do depth of field. And just basic, you're going to check off use gradients. Keep that stuff the same. And for blur strength, 3%. You can change that, but I think 3% is the best. So once you have those settings, we can get to work. So oops. Uh, so you're going to make your slate material. Let's try to find this. It's file, load material, preset, architect. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to need to, yeah, it's right here. So just take a look at that. Load material, preset, then architecture, addition, then stone, and then slate. And once you have that... You don't have to get the settings perfect because these five, um, never mind. For the floor, you want to get it pretty close to what I have. So I think the only thing that I really changed, if I'm remembering by heart, if anything's different, I'm sorry because I don't really remember, but the only thing I changed, I put the reflection at around 20%. And everything else is pretty much the same. You can change it a little bit if you want. But that's a floor with that nice reflective texture. And then you have these five spheres, which are all different materials you can use whatever materials you want to and I'm not really gonna get into the details of the exact settings I put on materials because chances are you're not gonna want exactly what I have but if you wanna know start with this one this is just a simple black 
uh, custom texture I created with like a 5% reflection. This blue, whatever this is, this blue is a, let's see, is a lead material, uh, is a lead material with a little bit of blue coloring. But just to save time, I'll let you make your own five materials or load these, um, load the same ones I loaded if you want. But so you have a lead over here with some blue on it. You have a white with reflection, and you have a red with Fresnel reflection, a black with a lot, very little reflection right here. This is a copper texture, and right here is a chrome. And besides the red, the black, and the white, all these textures can be found in Load Material Preset, most likely either under Engineering Edition or Architecture Edition. But you don't have to use the same materials as I do, and I'm sorry if you wanted to. I'm not going to get to explaining that. So, let's see. What should I talk about next? You need a light. Um, let's see. You can put the light wherever you want. Oh, shit. Yeah, I just put it, you can you can just put it the same way I did it, just over the spheres and pretty much in the center. Maybe about one one sphere distance on, yeah, I'm not really making much sense, but just put it over the spheres in the center and you'll get a good look. And uh, I didn't really change any of the settings for light. And then I think like pretty much finally we're going to have a sky. No, not finally because I have to do depth of field, but we're going to have a sky. So... If you didn't know where Sky is, you're going to click here. Alright, um, before I forget, for the spheres, if you don't know how to get a sphere, it's this. And then click Sphere and duplicate it five times. And you're going to want the segments to be 50. Alright, so once you have that, let's just double check what we have. We have the light. We have all of these spheres with some cool materials that you made. We have a floor with the slate material. And we have all these settings good. For, for the render. So what we need to get to now is the sky. So you're going to add a sky by clicking here and then sky. And then you're going to right click on it, Cinema 4D Tags, and click on Compositing. Once you have that, the only thing you're going to do is you're going to uncheck Scene by Camera. And that's it. So after that, you're going to drag on your HDRI image onto the sky. So if you don't, if you didn't download the one that I was talking about at the beginning of the material uh, tutorial, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Load Material Preset, Engineering, no, Cinema 4D Materials HDRI, and choose any of these beautiful HDRIs. To be honest, they're not quite as good as the ones that I suggested in the that I have the link for that in the description. But these will work if you don't want to download those ones. So just click on any of these and. Yeah, so just click them and then you'll have it right here in the materials bar. So, which I have this one. And then you're going to drag it onto the sky. So you have the compositing tag and then you have that um, material. And pretty much what that is, is it's creating the reflection that's going to be reflecting off each of these spheres and off of the floor. Uh, but what this compositing does is it makes it so you can't see the actual HRI image. Uh, the camera doesn't see it, but the reflection does see it, if that makes any sense. So finally, what we have to do is we have to do camera. So you're going to add a new camera by clicking on this and then clicking camera. And then this button, right where my mouse is, you're just going to click that once. I already have it clicked. After that, you should have these settings. I just figured out how to use depth of field today, and I'm really not that good at it. So what I did is I just played around with settings, and when I found one that I liked, I used it. And this is the setting that kind of works well. So what you have is you have target distance a thousand feet, you have front blur not clicked on, and you have rear blur checked off, and you have the start for rear blur at zero feet and the end for rear blur at two thousand feet. So those are my settings. You can take a look at those real quick and make them the same as yours, but you don't have to because you could always just play around with the settings, see which one you like. But if you want just a decent setting that gets you with this image how it's a little bit blurred in the back you can just um, go with the setting I have which again is target distance a thousand feet start zero feet and twenty feet so at this point I think we're pretty much done we have the floor we have all the spheres covered with their materials we have the camera covered we have the sky covered and we have the render, se render settings covered so when you're done just click on this
and it's going to be good in your render, and I'm not going to render it because I don't want to waste space. But thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. Um, if you liked the tutorial and found it helpful, please subscribe to our channel, which doesn't have very subscri many subscribers right now. Thanks for watching, guys.